Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Shabby meets Bling. Tonight is the second edition of Evermore, A Romance for the Ages. This is a DIY Shabby Chic wedding event series. With the help of some of my very talented friends, we are going to bring to you all the different aspects of the creative side of planning a wedding. This is the design brief that all of the designers were handed. Here you will see specific design choices made by our bride. Everything from colors to flowers, fabrics, and fonts. We have gone to the extent of creating a fake wedding, a fake bride, groom, parents, and locations. This is a full-blown mock wedding. Tonight, the focus will be on wedding day preparation. We will begin with our bridesmaids bouquets. Where to start? With the bouquet holder, of course. Most of them are common, uninspiring, and plastic. And quite frequently, gaudy. Gaudy to the point of being ugly. So, I like to use unusual items to make my bouquet holders, as I did here, combining two everyday, ordinary objects together to create something beautiful. I will be doing the same for this wedding. I picked up these fabulous old funnels. There were even more than this. I picked up, I believe it was nine in total for $14. All different shapes and sizes. Some of them are fluted at the base. Some have little handles and knobs, but this is what we will be using for our bouquets. Now for items to go in those beautiful funnels. This is the his and her section at Hobby Lobby. And this week, everything is 40% off. And I am going to be picking up some more items. You can see some of the things that I used in the first edition of this series, The Engagement Party. I picked up a plethora of these boutonnieres. The off-white, that lovely purple, and the pink shades. These are also a true touch. They look real, they feel real, and they're absolutely gorgeous and on sale a fraction of the price of a stemmed rosebud. On a completely different thrifting shopping trip, I picked up these lovely little vintage hankies. Aren't they adorable? There's also a couple of uh, napkins thrown in too. So at two for 50 cents, you better believe I picked them up. And my favorite are right here and I will be using these in my bridesmaids bouquets. As in the arrangement for the engagement party, this will be a nice substitute for a major bow within the bridesmaids bouquet. I will be using some ribbon later, but this vintage handkerchief will be kind of the highlight of our little bridesmaid bouquet. I am simply folding it accordion style. Then I will fold it in half, not quite in half. I'm leaving one tail a little bit longer than the other to create a loop. Then I'm going to stitch it together. I will not be hot gluing this beautiful hanky because I do not wish to ruin it. We have two bridesmaids and here are two identical funnels that we will be using for their bouquets. Now. I am just going to do one for the sake of example for this video and I am going to first and foremost take this beautiful 100% cotton embroidered lace. It is gorgeous and it comes from burlapfabric.com. I'll leave the link in the description box. But I am going to take this beautiful lace and I am going to run it around the perimeter on the inside of my funnel. I will gather it as I go and I will be hot gluing it. Now, one thing I did discover, even though this funnel is not cold, it dried so fast. So I had to go bit by bit, little bit by little bit and gather. I will be adding a second layer on the exterior as well as another beautiful embroidered lace. Also from the His and Her shop are these beautiful little lavender picks. I'll be using these in the bouquet as well as this very lifelike fern also picked up at Hobby Lobby on sale at 40% off. I did tie a little bit of macrame string around the middle of my vintage handkerchief before I stitched it together and I am gluing that inside the funnel so I didn't have to get any glue on my little vintage handkerchief. I did disassemble my fern 
and I am adding individual wires to each and every one and also adding floral tape so you don't see the wire. And once I have completed the amount of little fern pieces I need, I will be gluing these around the perimeter. In lieu of star foam, I will be using these jar lids from the Dollar Tree as frogs, and I need some other pretty little items to add to my bouquets. I picked up some of these beautiful blingy buttons at Hobby Lobby, and they are gorgeous. They emulate vintage brooches, absolutely stunning. I did use some of these as scatter, as well as actual decor at the engagement party, and I'll do so again at the reception, but you can see the wide variety of buttons they have. I will be using some of these. I did sew the button in place, and I hot glued that lid, or frog, upside down in the funnel. And now to arrange our flowers. I have already added in that gorgeous fern as well as those beautiful little white flowers which were also part of the his and her collection. And now I'm adding in those roses which were boutonnieres but now stemmed roses as well as some other florals. Once all of my florals are in place I will be tucking in some forest moss because to me it looks the most lifelike. I will be helping my bride choose her wedding gown as well as her reception venue. You can ask most brides and they'll tell you the most important part of the wedding is the dress. The bride is the center of attention and she needs to look spectacular. So my advice is to go online first before you actually go shopping and get some kind of idea of what you're looking for. Narrow it down. There are thousands and thousands of dresses. So make sure you have some inspiration before you actually go shopping. This is our inspiration, this beautiful dress. This is the dress, but in ivory, that our designers will base their creations off of. I have arrived at a local bridal shop. I can't wait to look around. I did come prepared with my paint samples, some lace, and a couple of flowers that I have already been using, so I have something to reference. When I entered, the first thought was what a beautiful selection of dresses, a variety of colors and patterns and styles, and I thought, you know what, I need to ask some questions. Hi, Diana. Thank you so much for your time. Um, could you tell us a little bit about First, the name of the shop and what the shop has to offer. Sure. The shop is called Savvy Chic's Bridal. Savannah Porter is the owner. She started this place eight years ago. We have six different designers, over 300 dresses in the store. We also have private two-hour appointments that you can do, which is you and your party. And That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you sell directly off the rack or do we have to order our dresses or is there a combination of both? There is a combination of both. You can order your dress which takes five to eight months to arrive or if you're kind of on a tight schedule we can do off the rack options. Wonderful. I is there any one designer or style that is uh, currently the most popular? I would say Stella York is our most popular designer and I've seen a lot of an exposed corset bodice. Ooh, pretty. So do you have bridesmaids dresses as well? Yes, we do. Is there like a color that seems to be real popular with the bridesmaids right now and with the brides as far as gowns? Um, bridal gowns, ivory has been their go-to. I have seen a little bit of blush. And for pretty. bridesmaids, lately I've been seeing bridesmaids do a lot of different colors. Oh. So they kind of have the- A little variety. variety. Yeah. Nice. From the minute I walked in, I saw some of the beautiful accessories you have, and that was going to be one of my questions, but I see you have them. So maybe you could just walk along with me and tell me about some of them. Sounds good? Of course. Well, Diana, these are beautiful. What are they? What are they? Are they, they belts? Are so they... these are all belts. You can use them as an added detail to your wedding dress, or you can get just a little strap added to like a strapless dress just to give you that little bit of extra support. So we have lots of different styles that you can do. They are beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. 
I could think of some other uses for them too. Diana, this might be the dress for our bride. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So we have a kind of a princess cut neckline with a little bit of illusion V here. Uh, we have the tool bottom and the 3D applique, which kind of trails gently through the skirt and stops kind of giving it a whimsical -y look. Um, then we have a um, exposed corset back here, which is kind of popular right now. We have this boning here that's unlined, but there are options for you to get it lined. And then you have this nice train here with the satin buttons that go all the way down to the bottom. Tell me about this dress because I am in love with this dress. So we just got back from Charleston, South Carolina for the bridal's market. And this arrived yesterday. This is one of the new purchases. I just love the 3D applique and the sequence underlining. Also this little sweetheart bodice. It is so beautiful. I mean, it's the straps, those little straps. Are they to hang the down the arm? Yes. yes. The oh, yep. beautiful. She really is really pretty. She really is. I want to thank you, Diana, for all your time you spent with me today. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much yeah, for letting no me problem. be here. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Time to get back to work. Let's make the flower girl bouquet. Yet another funnel, and it is a wide mouth funnel, and it has a couple issues that I will be taking care of. You may notice the first thing I did was age this funnel because she was a little too shiny to be a shabby chic component for this wedding. And now I am straightening out the bottom of it because it is a little bit bent. I am taking my cue from the bridesmaid bouquet I am repeating the same process of adding that beautiful cotton lace embroidered ribbon around the perimeter of the inside of this big mouth funnel. And I will also again add this beautiful lace on the outside and another lace as well. If I'm going to be adding flowers to this little funnel, I'm going to have to add a bottom. So I took a lid off of a spray can and I'm gluing some ivory burlap from burlapfabric.com to this lid. Once I get it all the way glued, all the way around, I'm going to trim it up and I'm going to glue it into the bottom of the funnel. I'm pushing it nice and firmly so that it protrudes out just a little bit so that you can see that beautiful burlap. And now I am taking my other lid, frog, and I'm going to glue it right side up in the bottom of the funnel. Yet another thrifting find. I picked up this bunch of beautiful hydrangea, just the perfect color for this shabby chic wedding. And I'm going to take this literal. This flower girl is going to get one beautiful flower. And now the groom's boutonniere. I am taking one of those boutonnieres right off the rack and I'm going to give it an upgrade. We are gonna take it from simple to spectacular. We are going to customize this little boutonniere for our wedding so it is unique and different. I'm going to disassemble it and I am only after the rosebud. I will keep the other components, but I am just after this beautiful rosebud. I am going to add some of that lifelike fern and that lavender. I will use my floral wire and floral tape to lengthen all of my stems and then I will attach them together. And for continuity, I am once again using this embroidered lace. I have cut off three of those little pretty peaks and I'm folding the raw edges in and I'm going to stitch it together while gathering. And once it's complete, I will attach it to our beautiful new and improved boutonniere. Let's enhance a corsage pin. I am taking an average mundane corsage pin and I am going to cut off the little pearl at the end and then I am going to very simply add it to one of our pretty little items that I picked up in the his and her shop at Hobby Lobby. I have bent the existing wire to the back and I have cut it short and now I am pushing the corsage pin through almost all the way and then I will add a tiny bit of glue and pull it the rest of the way through. Once dried, you have a very elevated corsage pin. Another huge component is finding the right reception venue. 
It's extremely important to not only capture who you are as a couple, but the actual essence or theme of your wedding. This is a shabby chic wedding, so we are looking into buildings that have elegant ballrooms, like this fabulous post house, which is from a bygone era. Hey Laura, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? I am fabulous. Could you tell us who you are and um, this fabulous facility is what now? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Laura Hoyle and I am the event manager here at the Post House Ballroom. Um, we can seat up to about 200 people here. We love to do events, we love to do weddings. Fabulous. Um, the best part, the reason I took this job is because this is the main fundraiser for the Lee County Senior Center. Okay. And so I love the idea that I work and help out uh, senior centers have a more fulfilling life. Wonderful, wonderful. Do you do just receptions or do you do ceremonies as well? We actually, I've done the job now here for about two months, but my last wedding last Saturday was my first one where we did a flip. Um, she only had 105, so it wasn't too crazy, but 105 for her wedding and then they came and they did cocktails here in the hallway and we flipped it for the reception. Wonderful. Um, took about 15 minutes. They were good with it. Um, it, it, it went fine. I think most people are willing to drink cocktails for at least 15, 15 minutes. minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Indeed. Yep. So and what is the max capacity? We can do 200. Mm -hmm. To do 200, we have to have sat a few people here in the hallway. Mm -hmm. um, but it's beautiful in this it's hallway. It's beautiful in the I'll hallway. I'll show you all later, I promise. I'll show you <laughs> yeah. <the> photos. <laughs> and you can still see the bride and groom from the hallway, which yes. is nice. Yes. Okay, I know a lot of uh, brides are picky on their chairs and their linens and whatnot. Do you offer any kind of variety or choices? We, we have chair covers. Um, we only currently have white, um, but we have plenty. And then our tablecloths are white as well. Um, the bride is also welcome if she has another color that she wants to do. Um, we have a couple different places that they can rent them from or uh, a couple different websites if they want to purchase. Fabulous. Okay, <laughs> my last question for you, Laura, is do you offer services like catering, bartending, florist, or do you offer, you know, certain people that you worked with in the past? How does that go? We, we do have a, a bar here and a liquor license, so of course we want to do the bartending here. Um, and I have two girls that have worked here for over 20 years that are the bartenders and they do a fabulous job. Well, Laura, I really appreciate your time. It was wonderful to meet you. And uh, nice thank you. you for telling us about this beautiful post house. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Hi, Trace. It's me again with yet another request from our bride. She was so thrilled with the engagement party invitation, the save the date, and that coaster. She would like you to design her wedding invitation, RSVP, and ceremony program, as well as a basket-type gift for all of her out-of-town guests. Hi Dawn, this is Tracy. Just wanted to let you know I have emailed you the final designs for the wedding program as well as the invitation and RSVP. As far as the welcome baskets, I'll be sending those over separately, some photos for your approval. If you need anything else, just let me know. Thanks. We have so much more to do, but let's take a look at what we've created so far for the ceremony. Here are Tracy's designs in invitation form. Absolutely gorgeous. She will have these designs without text, curated into a collection and available at the end of this series. We sent out our invitations weeks ago, but wanted to share with you the stunning design. Now here is our beautiful boutonniere. Remember, so simple. Take an existing product and upgrade it. Just with a few touches, you have something unique and different than anyone else. And how about that corsage pin upgrade? Absolutely spectacular. Here it is, pictured on a men's suit. And how about that adorable, little delicate flower girl bouquet? One single flower, some embroidered lace and ribbon, a beautiful brooch style button, all in one large mouth shabby funnel. Shabby and chic. It doesn't get any better than this, or does it? Let's take a look at the bridesmaid bouquet. Here it is, ever so delicate. And here you get a really good look at the funnel and the lace. 
but let's really take a good look at this beauty. It's really amazing that if you shop well, you can really get a product that looks so lifelike. And that handkerchief. Hey, if you have grandma's handkerchief or a good friend, something borrowed. And how about that uh, button? Could easily be your mom's brooch, your godmother's brooch. Why not? It looks so lifelike, so real, and cost nearly nothing. I would like to thank the Bridal Fair 2024 contributors to this point. Monica from Up All Night DIY and Tracy from Tracy Vanover Designs. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your family and friends, and anyone that is getting ready to plan a wedding, know someone that's planning a wedding, or just is in love with love. You can follow me on Instagram and check out my shop on Etsy. The best way to support this channel is to subscribe, so don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this whole Bridal Fair event. More is to come. Stay tuned. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so much for viewing. We will see you next time.